Kimberly Garrison Harmon. I'm a professor in the Department of Family Medicine and Orthopedic Surgery and Sports Medicine. And um, I'm a sports medicine physician here at the University of Washington. I'm a UW medicine researcher who does research in sudden cardiac arrest and death. The name of the article that we're talking about today is the incidence and etiology of sudden cardiac arrest and death in high school athletes in the United States. And it will appear in the Mayo Clinic proceedings. You know, the incidence and etiology of sudden cardiac arrest and death, you would think that that's something that we know, but we actually don't. Traditionally, estimates have been that this occurs about 1 in 200,000 and 103,000, but that's primarily because we don't really have very good um, information on this, uh, in, on this particular topic. So what we did is we actually looked at seven different states and over six years, the high school students there, and we looked for the incidence of how often people died, how often they had just a sudden cardiac arrest and survived, and also we looked at the causes of it to try and get a better idea of what's actually happening. Now we looked using media reports. So what we did was we took a big database that was created by Parent Heart Watch, which is Parent Advocacy Group, and we looked for all the deaths in high school athletes. Um, we know that media reports aren't the greatest way to figure out how people died, but it's really the best way that we have because right now in the United States there's no mandatory reporting of death or arrest and so this is the best way we had. Um, what we found was that the rate of sudden cardiac arrest and death in high school athletes was about 1 in 67,000 which is much higher than previously known. The other thing that we found which is similar to other articles is that about 90 percent of the deaths occurred in males and so the rate in males was 1 in 44,000 really surpri not surprisingly but, but um, similar to other research is that male basketball players had an exceedingly high rate compared to other athletes and we don't know why this is but we keep seeing it again in high school students and college students and, and um, other athletes. I think that the takeaway message of this article is that really sudden cardiac arrest and death occur more frequently than we think. The other thing that we found in this article was that the cause is not what we've traditionally thought. So um, we know that it's traditionally been thought that hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is the most common cause of death in athletes. And what we found was that the most common cause was people had left ventricular hypertrophy or they had a big heart, but they didn't actually have the pathologic changes that met the definition of this. And so the other thing that became readily apparent in this study was that the autopsies that are done at the community level just aren't really the best to get the information that we want to get. So if you die in the community and you have an autopsy, the reason that you're having the autopsy from the public's perspective is was this homicide, was it suicide, or was it natural causes? And so the exact natural cause is not as important to the local coroner or medical examiner. It's important to the person who died, it's important to the family who died to know exactly what caused because we want to understand if family members need to be concerned and we also want to understand from a broader perspective if people are dying of the same sort of thing, how do we detect it and how do we prevent it? And so um, I think that there's two takeaways. One is that the incidence is higher than we thought and the second is, is that we need better autopsy data and genetic testing to figure out what people are dying from. I think the finding relates to the clinical practice in that we know that, that sudden cardiac arrest and death happen. The primary purpose that we're doing our pre-participation exams, our sport physicals, is to try and prevent people from having catastrophic outcomes or death. We know that the most common reason that young athletes die in, while they're exercising is sudden cardiac arrest. And we're not doing a very good job with our current history and physical to, to pick out these people before they have an arrest or before they die. And so thinking about subgroups, high risk groups that it might make more sense to do advanced cardiac screening like an ECG to detect these things before they happen. And we need to do ongoing research to figure out whether this is feasible and how we can best implement this in communities and who really needs to be screened. What the finding means for patients is that sudden cardiac arrest and sudden cardiac death happen. They happen more frequently than we think, and so if you are concerned about this, then you maybe need to think about more advanced screening techniques like an ECG. Really, the next, there's two next steps for the research. The first 
is that we need to work to get mandatory reporting of sudden cardiac arrest and sudden cardiac death to be the norm in every state so that we have the best number so we really know how often this is happening and, and when it's happening and who it's happening to. So we need mandatory reporting and this is something that should be relatively simple. The other thing is we need better autopsies for these individuals who die. So we need advanced cardiac pathology and they need genetic testing so that we can find out what exactly is the cause of death and then work to prevent that from happening. An ECG is no good if you don't know how to read it correctly in an athlete and if you don't have the, cardio, uh, the, the resources in terms of cardiology resources to know what to do with follow-up. And so I think you have to look at what is the risk of the population. I personally um, think that all male basketball players need to be screened with advanced screening like an ECG. My, I have four sons, they play basketball, they've all been screened. Um, but there are places that it doesn't make sense because they don't have people who have the expertise to read them correctly or they don't have um, the expertise to know what to do when they do get something. And so I think ideally in high risk groups an ECG is the way that we're going to find these. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.